Okay, I'm gonna point out the muscles of the abdominal wall that you need to know. First off, these muscles that run straight up and down the anterior wall of the abdomen, these, are called, these muscles are called the rectus abdominis muscles. They are separated by and held together by this connective tissue structure straight down the middle called the linea alba. That linea alba runs from the sternum to the pubis and it helps stabilize the anterior wall, um, abd abdominal muscles of the anterior wall. So this is the rectus abdominis. The difference between the right side and the left side is just that on the right side, you see this rectus sheath, which is a connective tissue um, covering. And over here on the left side, it's just been taken away. That's why it looks more red in color. So the rectus sheath is a flat tendinous structure that helps hold the abdominal mus muscles together it serves as a, a protective function. It also helps maintain pressure within the abdominal wall to help maintain pressure and hold in all of the organs of the abdominal cavity. So this connective tissue structure called the rectus sheath encloses all of these muscles and helps maintain pressure within the abdominal cavity because we don't have bones surrounding and holding everything in. So that connective tissue covering helps maintain pressure. Um, the other abdominal muscle that you need to be able to identify is visible on both sides. This is the external, these are the external obliques. So oblique meaning coming down like an angle. So these muscles right here coming down at an angle on both sides, labeled number 21 on this model, these are the external obliques. So external, meaning on the outside of the rectus abdominis, oblique because it comes down at an angle. Now next on your list are the muscles that move the scapula. And two muscles that you need to know for this, I've already talked about the trapezius muscle in one of those last videos. I mentioned it because we could see it on the head and neck model. So trapezius, Okay, so the, this is the only muscle in the human body that's named for how it looks by with two of them together, not just one of them individually, like a trapezoid, right? But together they form what looks like a trapezoid, but individually they look more like a, a big triangle. Okay, so tra trapezius, trapezius, and then back to the kind of anterior side of this model to show the serratus anterior. I'll show you on both sides. This muscle right here is the serratus anterior. It's given that name because it looks like a serrated edge of a knife. So this muscle with the serrated edge, this is the serratus anterior. On this side, it's labeled number 19. This is also serratus anterior, okay? Next on the list, uh, you'll have to uh, be able to identify muscles that move the arm at the shoulder. The pectoralis major, this is a pretty easy one. It's quite large. And when you think about your pec regions, like the pectoral region, it's this big, broad muscle right here in the pectoralis region. So this is the pectoralis major. Now, if we could on this model remove the pectoralis major, there is, anytime you hear the term major in a muscle name, that usually means there is a minor. Um, there is a pectoralis minor, but we can't see it on our models. We would have to be able to remove the pectoralis major in order to see that. So pectoralis major. Next on the list is the latissimus dorsi. So I'm gonna go dorsi, dorsal. And these are your lats. They're it's huge, broad muscles of the back. They come up from the axillary region or the armpit region and come all the way back. This huge muscle latissimus dorsi on each side that's labeled number 16 on this side. This, these are the latissimus dorsi muscles. Next on the list is the deltoid. This one's pretty easy. I always think about it. So deltoid, delta is a, a triangle, all right? The Greek letter delta is a triangle. So it's a triangular shaped muscle. It sits on top of the shoulder region. To me, it looks like little shoulder pads. So here's the deltoid. You can see it on this side, it's this big muscle, these shoulder, quote unquote, shoulder pad muscles. All right, so that's those are the deltoids. Next is the teres major. So we have to look on the posterior side of the back. This right here, this muscle right here is the teres major. 
usually a major means larger um, and a lot of times it's below the minor so here's the terrace major right above that and it's smaller is the terrace minor on this side we can see it as well terrace major larger and below terrace minor smaller and above now this muscle that's labeled number 15 on this side this is the infraspinatus over here this would be the infraspinatus infraspinatus because it lies in that infraspinous process or sorry infraspinous fossa of the scapula all right and that leads me into talking about the muscles of the rotator cuff and I like to group these as the rotator cuff because clinically those are important and a lot of times are injured over the lifetime of an individual. So let's talk about specifically the muscles of the rotator cuff. First, I've already pointed out the infraspinatus muscle, right? These muscles again lie in the infraspinous fossa of the scapula. Next is the teres minor. So I already pointed that out when I showed you the teres major, but the teres minor these muscles are a part of that rotator cuff, teres minor. Next is the supraspinatus. Now we can't see the supraspinatus on this model, but you do need to be able to uh, know it and know its movements. I'd have to move, remove the deltoid and the trapezius, kind of remove those muscles to be able to see the supraspinatus. But just like the infraspinatus muscle lies in the infraspinous fossa of the scapula, the supraspinatus would lie in the supraspinous fossa of the scapula. So it would be right above the spine of the scapula. So we can't see it, but you still need to know that it's a part of the rotator cuff and you should be able to tell me the movements it carries out. Same thing with the subscapularis. So if I could remove all of these muscles and look at the anterior side of the scapula, Remember the anterior side of the scapula is real smooth and it's like this big fossa. Right on the anterior side of the scapula lies the subscapularis muscle. So although we can't identify it on this model, you should be able to know where it is. It's on the anterior side of the scapula, that it's a part of the rotator cuff, and you should be able to know its movements.